Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Inside Curling Special Edition of Daily Draw, where we come on every day to talk about the games over in Beijing and all things curling. Uh, it's been a great uh, run so far. Uh, today, we're going to give you a wrap on the two medal rounds, uh, what happened there, and what's coming up with four person curling. Coolbet is a proud sponsor of curling and, frankly, all things ice related. Check them out. Their logo is a polar bear. And after all, if you love sports, Make sure you join the thousands of people already enjoying life inside the Cool Bet community. Okay, let's get uh, right to it. Today was the sixth day of action for mixed doubles at the 2022 Games in Beijing. Two huge games, of course. We got into the medal round. Yes, Canada just lost out in their final game to try and get into the playoffs. Uh, But we've got to find out what happened in the first bronze medal game, Warren. Okay, Jim. Well, I guess we were all expecting this to be quite a battle. It started out that way. Great Britain had the hammer in the first end. Massive six rocks around the forefoot. Jennifer Dodge tried a 20-foot raise run through for possibly two. Almost makes it, but takes it a single point. The second end is when things started to change. Sweden, of course, had the last stone. Almeida Duval is left with a very difficult long double for three, but is already counting one. Could have drawn for two, but she tried the double, and bingo. She makes it, picks up three po- four points, and all of a sudden the score is 4-1 Sweden. Third end, Duval again makes another great shot with her final stone and leaves Sweden sitting three around the forefoot. Dodds can't do much the way things are set up, except maybe cut them down to one. She comes out a little wide, misses everything. Sweden steals three more. They're now up 7-1 after three ends. In the four, Sweden steals one more. They take another single in the... In the fifth, and in the sixth end, Duvall makes a double with her final stone and leaves Dodds a draw for two. She makes it, but Mowat and Dodds decide that was enough. Scores 9-3. They shook hands and said, congratulations, Sweden. You have won the bronze medal. This was another unbelievable performance. Almeida, Almeida Duvall uh, shot 100% in that game, and she's throwing the last rock. So when someone shoots 100% throwing the last rock, he ain't going to beat him, and right. uh, as good as Bruce Mowat is, uh, he wasn't going to do much in that game. Uh, so there you go. Here's a bit of a teaser. I wonder if everyone in Great Britain this morning is saying, they weren't prepared. That team wasn't ready. Uh, we're going to okay. I want to, yeah, no good. I wanna, uh, yeah, you're probably getting my drift of what we're getting at. Uh, congratulations uh, to Sweden. That was un- unpredictable. Um, Kevin? The big, the Mac Daddy, the gold medal game. Yeah, congratulations to uh, to Sweden on the bronze game, and of course to Duvall for shooting a hundred. Amazing. We got to call the medal the uh, gold medal game today, and uh, quite a game it was. You know, watched uh, watched Team Italy walk out. Stefania, who's been just brilliant, she was tight as a fiddle string before that game you know the the coach came out and tried to to get her dancing and get her uh doing some stuff before before the cameras were even on i got a report from Corey robinson our our field reporter who was in beijing uh watching and uh and she was just so nervous and it showed in the first end um she missed and uh mojuner missed uh his first one and got in big trouble and ended up giving up a steal of two to start the game and i was thinking to myself oh boy here we go, you know, this young team and just all the stress of, of getting in a gold medal game and how it works at the Olympics. And Anyway, somehow they turned that ship around and in the second end made great shot after great shot. At both teams, both teams had a great second end. Ended up, there was no shot basically for three, but got the deuce right back. And here we go. After that, Team Italy, oh my, I can't say they didn't miss anything for the rest of the entire game. But basically didn't. They ended up shooting 87% after having a terrible first end. They shot 87% as a team, which means they were basically flawless for the rest. They steal one in three. They steal three more to really put it away in four. And uh, and then the fifth was a power play. Held Norway, because that was kind of Norway's last chance, was with power play in the fifth. Only got one and cruised to an 8-5 victory. Uh, Stefania being the youngest uh, athlete in curling uh, at Olympic history to win a gold medal. Youngest, fantastic. Uh, Amash is only uh, 26, <laughs> so he's not right. he's not <laughs> old. 
you know, but but 22 years old, she p- played incredible. She owned the button the entire game. And one thing I thought that was fitting was at the end of the game, she got to throw the last rock to 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 end the game. I was mm-hmm. I was really hoping that uh, Kristen uh, Skaslin, the the Norway last thrower, would hit and stay on hers to make Stefania. Uh, make the last shot, and she did, which was wonderful. And not only did she make the hit, her last one, she makes a double. She made a double on her last one to score one to make it 8-5. to five. So huge congratulations to both Italy and Norway, but especially to the young team in Italy because what kind of a change or what kind of a difference will that make to uh, Italian curling? Um, it's going to draw many more people into the sport. Right now there's only about 400 curlers in Italy. It's just going to explode there after these young mm. athletes full of energy just dominated um, and went undefeated, for goodness sakes. Uh, it's only happened three times um, in modern-day Olympic history. Uh, our team in, in Vancouver in 2010, Jennifer Jones on the women's side in 2014 in Sochi, and now Team Italy in uh, 2022 Beijing. So um, they've made Olympic history in a whole bunch of ways. That's Italy's first medal in curling, uh, not just in Olympic curling, but in curling, uh, men's or women's. Uh, their mm-hmm. best finish up to that, I believe, Warren, was uh, a fifth place finish one time. They've never been above fifth place ever, and here they are, top of the podium as champions. Congratulations! Well, what a, what an event, Kevin, uh, for for Italy, as you pointed out, uh, setting records all over the joint. Uh, you know the thing about curling, uh, with the round robin, uh, it only get you into the playoffs, okay? So uh, I've never seen a sport more relative to the expression, you're only as good as your last game. So when you brought that up, that <laughs> Italy gives up two in the first end, you're going, okay, well, that was a good run. Yeah, something, something's got to burst this bubble, but uh, unbelievable, un- unbelievable what they did. Uh, Warren, speaking of Italy, before we get to the stats, uh, you've got some history on curling in Italy. I watched that medal ceremony this morning and with a lot of emotion because uh, a lot of things ran through my mind. Um, There we have Constantini, 22 years old. When Neil Hughes and I invented this game back in 2002, she was two years old. And now somebody's out there playing that game for an Olympic medal. I think the other thing was the history of Italy at World Curling. And uh, I was around for that, believe it or not. Uh, because world curling is still it. pretty young. Yeah, we believe. Yeah, of course, we believe it. Yeah. <laughs> world curling is still pretty young. Uh, we go back to 1959. There was only two teams, Scotland and Canada. And by 1968, that had moved up to eight teams because there was only eight countries that could enter. But in 1973, in Regina, two more teams came into world curling. It was Italy and Denmark. And in that first appearance, they won one game. And guess who they won it against? Denmark. And that was their first victory. The second time they appeared was in 1974 in Bern, Switzerland, and I was on the ice and played against them. And, and there's some pretty humorous things because the guy skipping Italy, Renato Gazzi, he was a huge man. Hector Gervais was a big man, but Renato was bigger than Hector. And the third was a little guy. And these two were fighting and arguing continually. It was, it was quite hilarious. <laughs> and they also had a bottle of wine going behind the scoreboard at each end of the, uh, of the arena. Beautiful. <laughs> so it was, it was quite entertaining, to say the least. I, I just checked to see. We beat them 8-4, to 8-4. to four, But they won their second game. And I found it really humorous to see who they defeated. And I couldn't remember what had happened. But they beat Scotland 6-3 to three in that second world championship in 1974. And that was their humble beginnings. I can remember we had a joke back in those days that uh, wouldn't be very funny today, but the best Italian takeout was a pizza. And uh, (laughs) I get that. I get that. (laughs) And and, and that was where they came from. And to watch today, to see those two young athletes, um, it really touched me. And it was. uh, Yeah, good. Warren, you can hear the quiver in your voice about that. Uh, Congratulations. You must be proud uh, for that. Uh, mixed doubles event that uh, um, has come so far. Uh, a little vino, Kev, behind the scoreboard. If you're with Italy, okay. A little, uh, a little scotch, okay. If you're from Scotland and uh, and, and, and Germany, Swiss ri- Germany's and bringing Swiss- some schnapps. <laughs> and the Swiss were upset because Gervais smoked on the ice. Yeah, there you <laughs> Italians go. were so, drinking. <laughs> that wouldn't be the first time you heard of a curler having a little libation during competition, Kevin. Right? <laughs> They were actually, Warren, hang on, hang on. They were actually, like, during a game, going behind the scoreboard, 
Like, like, like actually during the contest and having a drink? Yes. <laughs> yes. That, that yes, wasn't totally awesome. uncommon in no those idea. days. Maybe, yeah. I, can, I, I won't mention the team, but I can remember back in, uh, but people around the same time, they, another team in Canada at the Briar had a little libation going behind the scoreboard. <laughs> this is the old oh, days, Kevin. Oh, <laughs> I'm, awesome. changing, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up with a new expression. All the curlers went to a bar and a curling game <laughs> <laughs> broke out. <laughs> uh, I guess maybe this is a good time to uh, talk about this uh, before we get to some of the intricacies of mixed doubles. Um, yesterday, uh, we, you know, after Canada's lost to Italy, uh, people were freaking out. Uh, not, not everybody, but uh, that they were ill-prepared, that they got set up for the kill. Uh, there looked like a lot of blaming uh, to Curling Canada, and, and they were never going to do well. Other countries are on and on. Um, what, Warren, what, what do you think of that uh, take? I, personally, I think it was unfair to Rachel and uh, uh, John. Um, you know, they, they competed. Uh, you know, it's, it, I think it's unfair to the other teams that everyone's saying, well, you're lucky, you know, just because Canada played bad. So what, what about you, Warren? What do you say about that? I think they were put in a very difficult situation, but this is an unusual year. Uh, COVID has created all kinds of unusual circumstances, so they kind of, to some degree, became victims of that, had very little time. And I, I find it interesting as to the number of people that feel, ah, if you got a week or so to prepare, that's fine, that's, that's no problem. And that's back into the old days. I mean, even probably 10 years ago, Kevin would probably relate that people couldn't really get their head around needing a few months to get ready for something like the Olympics. And I think it's a mental preparation. It's getting yourself to that point. And the, the days of where you win something on Sunday and start playing in the next level at competition the following weekend, I think, are long gone if you want people to do their best. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the problem. They, they certainly didn't have enough time to really get things together. And, and whether or not that impacted, who knows? I mean, they played, they played very well. Uh, and they lost by a millimeter. So you can't really come down on them for that. And, and it's a very tight competition. Mm -hmm. uh, practically anybody could have qualified out of those 10 teams. I don't think there was any, any light between many of them. Maybe, maybe China a bit, uh, Australia, because they struggled a lot at the, at the start. But then at the end, they, they brought it on strong, and that team had a good record. They, they were a world mixed doubles team. Uh, I think they finished fourth, maybe back in about 2019, something like that, at the Mixed Doubles World Championship. Mm -hmm. So they were no neophytes either. So it was a tough competition. But I think taking that into consideration, our teams from Canada going forward with all these competitions in future, there's just got to be more time for them to get ready for it. And I think right down again as to how the teams are even determined as to who's going to go really has to have a, a right. serious consideration. Did, did, uh, did Team Canada lose, Kev, or did the other teams win? If you know what I mean by that, you know? Um, well, yeah, the other teams won. There's no question. Um, I could, John and Rachel did, I thought, I thought they did a great job. Um, the, the, in my opinion, um, we have to give the teams more time. I know in 2010, we prepared for four years for that Olympics. Like that mm -hmm. was our goal for four years as a team. So we did everything to try to prepare for the situation in Vancouver. We, uh, to Mark Kennedy will tell you straight up, it was all about for us trying to get to as many finals as we could. We'd lose some, we'd win some, but we'd get tough and we'd get grizzled and, and we'll be ready for the final in Vancouver if we got there. Now, obviously, we, there's no guarantee you're going to get there, but we were preparing for four straight years. And in this case, we have a team, we want them to win gold, a gold medal. We do. But we just gave them a, just a few days to get ready. Not years. Like not, mm -hmm. We didn't give them right. just one year. We didn't, we didn't even give them a month. We, like, it's just simply not enough time. It wasn't right. fair. Um, we can't blame John and Rachel. My goodness. They did great, I thought. But could they have done better if they knew, say, in April of last year or something like that or this fall? But hard to, it's hard to have a, a, a big play down like that, a playoff in October when curling, you know, you're just getting going. Mm -hmm. um, probably makes more sense late the previous season to right. to name your your olympic teams then they can train all summer they know their olympic team they can w be the olympic team all fall travel to europe a lot there's lots of mixed doubles events in europe really good mixed doubles events that our teams generally don't play in because uh, they're busy doing their four-person curling but if they knew they were going to be the mixed doubles team they'd make time 
to play a half a dozen events because they're going to the Olympic Games. So right. uh, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Uh, I sure, uh, you, there's no way you can blame John Morris and Rachel Holman. They're two of the best curlers in the world and have been for a long time. So there's no way that people should get after them. But let's give our athletes the best chance to win possible. And we did not do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't blame them. I, like you say, they're the best. Girl. Everyone's going, well, they should have, should have sent another team. Well, well who? <laughs> you know, compared, to, <laughs> compared to the best curlers, who do you want to go with? The only thing I noticed in it, uh, Kevin and Warren, was, uh, you know, it's, the, it's, it's not like you're playing on different dimensions, same, same dimensions uh, in curling, same rocks, you know, a bunch of shots that you've got to, you know, execute. Is uh, communication, they, they didn't quite seem to gel, Kevin. It was, you know, it's, at some sure. point it looked like Rachel was kind of wide-eyed going, okay, I guess, but I don't agree with that. Well, sure, but how many mixed doubles games that they played? Um, Team right. Italy and, 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 and Norway, they played each other five times this season against each other already. The, the, the gold medal game, they'd already, already battled five times. And Italy was up three to two. But these people, they're playing each other all the time, these top mixed doubles teams. But our mm-hmm. mixed doubles aren't. And that's okay. Like we can't really do it year after year after year because four-person curling pays the bills better. And that's just, that's just the truth right now. But when it comes to a, a, a gold medal effort, let's make sure that the, the team is decided well in advance so that we give them the very best chance possible. And they could have been over there battling with these guys all fall and and getting ready for the, for the games and it's just you know it's it's that's the way I feel I feel strongly about I guess you can tell I feel strongly about it right. we need to give our teams more time and I know that our team put a ton of effort in for four years not for one month four weeks or three weeks or well whatever and I, th- it was I think the, those guys. the other thing is there's a there's a well organized mixed circuit in Europe that you're mentioning Kevin that they were playing in all year and again COVID is an issue. But that's another problem with our mixed doubles. We don't really have a circuit for these North American teams to play in. And I think that's another thing that's got to be looked at and something has to happen with it because if you're going to get better at playing mixed doubles, you've got to be playing it. Okay. Well, very good. Uh, pe- people have been waiting to hear from you guys uh, on this. So uh, nice job and uh, um, congratulations uh, you know, to everyone. The first event of curling in the Olympics. It sure, it sure is cool to watch it. And uh, the coverage, coverage was great. Uh, hey Jim, especially- Jim. Before you go, hey, Jim. Before you go forward, I'd like to thank everybody for reaching out to us. We have had an incredible amount of curling fans from around the world reach out to us um, through various platforms. I just want to thank them because it's really important that we grow this game worldwide. It is growing worldwide. Italy winning is going to help, but I sure appreciate everybody reaching out to to Inside Curling. It's been incredible well, yeah. the last twenty four hours. It's been incredible. Yeah, it has. Thank yeah. you for all your interest, without question. Well, especially especially uh, uh, the hours that you guys are keeping. So uh, that, uh, that obviously is going well. So I thought, uh, starting today, you guys, that if you could do it 24 hours a day, okay, because uh, right, right to Warren, right to me. Well, we can, but we're worried about you. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I know. Look at the bags on my eyes, okay? I hate this video thing. Um, okay, Warren, let's get back on track here. Uh, you're going to give us some stats. Well, I think uh, normally we wouldn't probably go down this route, but uh, with Amalda Deval shooting 100% in that bronze medal game, we got to mention it again. That is just amazing uh, that that can happen at that level. And I can't ever remember at a championship game of that nature where somebody shot 100%. I don't know if Kevin can, but uh, that's amazing. And Oscar Erickson wasn't exactly a, a shrinking violet. He shot 82. And look at this. Bruce Mowat shot 85, and he lost 9-3. to three. Jennifer Dodds, however had a bad game. She only shot 56%, and she missed two or three really bad shots by a lot. Over in the other game, the Italian Express, Stefani Constantini. Well, she had a bad game today. She only shot 83%. But Amos picked up the slack, <laughs> and he, he came in at 90%. Uh, meanwhile, the Norwegians, a uh, little bit of trouble. Skeskelen, 70%, and Magnus Nendergrotten, 69 So, as Kevin always says, if you shoot well, you win. And I think today was a, a very good example of that. Yeah, and it shows you that the stats are revealing. Uh, okay, boys, what about your predictions? Who, 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 uh, you guys are very close, uh, neck and neck. Uh, I've got, I don't know, I, I may be missing a draw now, but Kevin, I, got, I had you at 14 and 3, Warren at 13 and 4. Uh, and then uh, Warren, Warren said he's going to catch up. 
How'd it go, Kev? Your your predictions. Uh, let's. Well, what are you going to start with? Uh, women first. No, or, we're talking or, about the last no, we're talking draw. about what happened. Who did, who did you guys pick in the bronze and the gold? Oh, gee, where is that at in my paperwork here? Uh, da, 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 da. I know you picked Italy for the gold medal. Oh, definitely picked Italy. I don't remember you guys. Who did I pick? I'm trying to find it here. I I think we maybe both picked the same because we oh we did that, actually. Uh, There's no catching the up saw, to each other. Yeah, that uh, yeah we picked the Mawad. <laughs> yeah, thought that Mawad would come through big. Well, he didn't do that bad, but uh, he ran into uh, yeah the buzzsaw called uh, Daval, and there was no chance. So we were both uh, 50-50. Okay, That's well there right. you go. I know what I did too is I picked the opposite of what you guys did. So. 50, 50, I'm 50, 50 as well. Okay? So maybe I can become an idol of everyone in curling, Kevin, like you are now from uh, Team Italy. What, and by the way, uh, as much as we laugh about that, that's what uh, uh, Mo- Mozaner uh, had said, Kevin, about, about you, that you were his idol. And look what happened right to, right to the gold medal game and victory. So um, way to go, uh, everybody. Uh, okay. Uh, each day we're going to uh, discuss something interesting, and we, which we have been. Uh, through our daily draw about mixed doubles. And uh, here's what we're going to talk about today. Why does losing the hammer when you blank an end work in mixed doubles, but it does uh, but it does not seem to be a... Con- right? That should be does not, right, Warren? Does not seem to be a consideration for a right, person. That's right. Okay. That's right. Uh, okay, first question. Why does losing the hammer when you blank an end work in mixed doubles, but it does not seem to work in four-person curling. Uh, let's answer that question first. Uh, Warren, Warren or who wants to go on that one? Kevin, Kevin? will answer it. Sure, I'll take it. Okay. Yeah, well, you know what? It, does, it works very well in mixed doubles, but with the, the rocks that you put out before the end starts <coughs> really causes a lot of rocks in the four-foot area. There aren't many ends where even a blank would be possible. Um, so it forces people to be aggressive with those initial stones. And mm-hmm. so I, I love it. Um, that way, if you do try to play wide open and you roll out, which was the case a, cu- a couple of times in this Olympic Games, you lose the hammer. Works great. Traditional curling, there aren't pre-placed guards around. Now, there is a free guard zone, but it, if you throw it in the house, the other team can hit it. So it changes the strategy. Now, would it work? Maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, you're definitely toying with the, the actual strategy of our sport when four-person curling. Mixed doubles curling has different strategy built into it on purpose. So that's a little bit different, Jimmy, when you're talking about a sport that's designed to be ultra-aggressive or a right. sport designed like chess where it's all the moving parts for a eight or ten ends, and sometimes it's best to blank to hold the hammer into the even ends, be it six and eight or eight and ten in a ten-end game. Right. Uh, Warren, you invented this game, uh, so next question is for you. Why in mixed doubles does one person throw three stones and the other throw two? Oh, that's a very interesting question, and I can give you some of the rationale we had when this all happened. So when we put mixed doubles together, it was an attempt to do something that was completely opposite from what curling was and how it was perceived. So... Curling has had some very dyed-in-the-wool rules over the years. So it was four people. You started a game. You comp- started a competition. You couldn't change positions. Uh, it was a major problem for somebody to move from lead to skip and vice versa. Uh, once the game started, for sure, some competitions you could do it after the competition began. But it wasn't, it wasn't usual. It just didn't happen. And certainly substitution, again, was another thing that was absolutely not allowed. Mm -hmm. So we thought, let's do something here that's going to kind of be a little bit different. That uh, let's, first of all, have one person throw three rocks and the other one two, and that they can change that kind of whenever they want to. Because this is going to set up another dynamic. Based on circumstances of a game, you may all of a sudden switch from the person throwing three rocks to the one throwing two. The other thing that came into mind was traditional mixed curling at that point in time in 2002 There had never been a female skipped a winning traditional four-person mixed team at the Canadian level. Shannon Clybrink came along and won the Canadian championship in about 2004, but at 2002 it hadn't happened. So we also thought, okay, being the way curling is, the male's going to want to throw the last rock. (laughs) And so we thought that was what would happen. As a result, we now are going to put the female in position. She's going to throw the most rocks. She's going to throw three rocks if the male's going to throw the last one. 
And so this is going to change things around a little bit as well from what it has been traditionally. To our surprise, as we're seeing now, it went the other way around, mm -hmm. and the women end up throwing one and two, or one and five, because the men can throw harder, usually, and they seem to feel that that's an advantage to put that person into the center of the fold, and that's the way all of them are playing. And again, as I've said, I think a couple of days ago, maybe another rule needs to be brought into mixed doubles where they're going to make that change, just like the power play, at least once in the game, you have to switch position. But that was our, our thought process and the rationale behind putting this together, which was to create something really different and to make people think about what are we going to do this end versus what we did last end. And uh, lo and behold, it hasn't quite happened the way we thought it would, but it still has unfolded to create an interesting situation. Right. If you're a four-person team, Kevin, in Italy, I would get uh, Constantini to be on my team. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pick up that phone today and go, look, yeah, look at, yeah, you're going you're gonna to be on our team. Um, Warren, you had mentioned you might make a change there in the game. Kev Kevin, when you look at mixed doubles, which you, which you love, um, is there anything you look at, Kev, that you say we, we might add to that game or maybe change, to, change it? Uh, everyone got to see a bunch of it, of course, during the game so yeah. far. I don't know. I, I, I know I wouldn't touch it right now. It's so compelling. It's a, it was a, I got to call a lot of games in the last however long it's been, <laughs> week, mm -hmm. week or so. Um, right. it's, it's been fantastic. And uh, no, I, I, Jim, I, I don't think so. Uh, um, I couldn't have enjoyed calling a game more than this gold medal game today. We mm -hmm. saw a stressed out young team start the game, uh, mm -hmm. giving up two points, neckties tight as it could be, and then come somehow somehow come around and played brilliantly for the rest of the game and just walked away with a gold medal and it was it was awesome the amount of rocks in play the amount of great shots were made um and the the athletes you've got to be young fit to play this game um as you get older it's just so difficult to jump up and sweep that much so it's, there's, there's so much positive about it i i would not change a thing for now. Yeah. We'd love to get inside Constantini's head uh, because she was so good. Um, can you remember, Kev, when you threw your last stone in Vancouver, when you won the gold, when you, you crouched down in the hack, you, got, you, you grabbed the rock, you grip it, and what were you saying to yourself, Kev? What was going through your mind when, uh, before you delivered? <laughs> uh, you know what? I really, I, I would be lying to tell you that I, I know what that was. You know, it's funny. Um, I don't, I don't really remember. I was so keyed up by then. It was an open head. I just had to make contact. Um, so I don't really remember. I remember the freeze, uh, earlier in the game that got mm -hmm. us two points. Uh, that was a big, I remember that clearly. And I remember looking around and seeing people. I remember, I remember doing that after the game was done. Um, but boy, yeah, that kind of stuff, it's just, it's gone because I guess you're just so tied into the, in, into the, I guess what I don't know. I can't, you know, I can't explain it, Jim. I can't remember right. that shot. I don't remember letting that rock right. go. Actually, no, yeah, I have yeah, no yeah. recollection of it. That's a good question because I think if you've been uh, at the top level of curling in most sports, the shots that you make or your team made to win are always in your mind, but also are the ones to lose. And it's really interesting. This goes back a long time, but still very distinctly, clearly in my mind, is losing Alberta Junior Championship on a hit and roll out where we had to hit and stay to win the province. And uh, that never goes away. Yeah. A long time ago. I think yeah. if it was me, even if it was a simple uh, hit and stick, I think I'd fake a heart attack and say, okay, Kevin's <laughs> got to throw the rock. <laughs> just just think of the golfer that has to make the two-foot putt oh, for a million. Uh, for a million. <laughs> yeah, for all the cash. Uh, okay. Uh, great stuff so far, boys. Uh, time to get to our predictions. The four-person men's and women's curling, of course, is coming up uh, next. And uh, when we come back, we're going to get your picks, boys. Stick around. Okay, let's get uh, to it. Welcome back, everybody, uh, to the Daily Draw. Uh, this is where we make your predictions, uh, brought to you by Cool Bet. Uh, go over there, actually, Cool Bet website, and uh, lay a few shekels down. Uh, I'm getting kind of drilled. <laughs> okay, let's get to it. Uh, cool Bet picks uh, for the four-person men's uh, curling and the four-person women's, which starts today uh so you guys are gonna you said pick four warren uh okay so we're gonna see how you're gonna do so let's start with the women there's 10 teams britain 
Uh, Ziv Mira headed uh, Canada, of course, is Jennifer Jones. China, Han Yu. Denmark is uh, Madeline DuPont. Japan is Suzuki Fuchisawa. Did I get that right, Kev? You no, did. Not Good bad. Job, Jimmy. Unjun Kim uh, for Korea. Uh, ROC is uh, Elena Kovaleva. Or Kovaleva. Kovaleva. Uh, Sweden, Anna Hasselborg. Sylvana Terenzoni is uh, curling for Switzerland. And Tabitha Peterson is heading up USA. So, uh, Warren, why don't you go first? All right, Jim. Well, that's uh, that's a tough field, without question. We've got uh, all three medal winners from 2018 are in the in the mix, and uh, Jennifer Jones, of course, was a gold medal winner in 2014. So, off the top, we look at Britain, Canada. Uh, Eve Muir had lots of experience, has had a very good year, but I'm not going to pick uh, Britain. I'm going to pick Canada. Looking down the, the list, I think Anjun Kim from Korea got the silver medal in 2018. That's a good team. I think at this uh, competition, she's going to be right there, so I'm going to pick her as a, a second choice. Can't overlook Anna Hasselberg, gold medal winner from 2018. She's got to be in the mix. And I think probably the surprise in this Olympics will be Tabitha Peterson from the USA. I think they will be in there as well. So my four picks are USA, Sweden, Korea, and Canada. Leaving out some really good teams there, however, Sylvina Terrazzoni, Switzerland, uh, and Eve Muirhead from Britain, who could be right there, as could Fujiwara from uh, Japan. Let's go, Canada. Okay, let's get this thing back on track. Uh, Kev, who, who are you picking? Well, I definitely agree with Canada. I definitely agree with Sweden. Hasselborg is so good. No, they've, they've, they haven't they've had a great year, so it's a, they're going to have to pick up their pace, but I think they probably will. I like South Korea. I mentioned a few weeks ago that I kind of think they, I like them for the gold medal, actually. Uh, I also like uh, Alina Kovaleva out of Russia. Uh, uh, the athletes of Russia's team is really, really strong. Uh, better than most people give them credit. So that's uh, my four picks. Canada, Sweden, South Korea, Nunjun Kim, and Alina Kovaleva of the Russian athletes. Wow, that's a step out there. Okay. Okay. We got we uh, Sweden, Korea, Canada. Okay, so you guys have one different pick. Warnsey's gone with the USA, and you've gone with ROC. Uh, let's look at them in. Uh, Britain, Bruce Mowat, and everyone thought, of course, he would do better in the mixed doubles in that medal round. Uh, Bruce Mowat, uh, Brad Gushu, of course, for Canada. Uh, Ma Shue is uh, leading up China. Denmark is uh, Mads Nogard. Italy. Uh, is uh, Joel Ratones. Everyone's uh, my Italian's with the Masson. They're playing third. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he and he's going good. Norway is uh, Stefan Wallstad. ROC is Sergei uh, Glukov, and Nicholas Adin, of course, is the skip for Sweden. All right, you got two more teams, Jim. Oh, okay. <laughs> you sent the script. It's all broken up. Okay. Uh, Switzerland, Benoit Schwartz, and John Schuster for USA. So there's your 10 teams. Broken up, but there's your 10 teams. I don't like to go too fast for you guys, Warren, just so you can hear me. Okay, uh, Hanson, your picks. <laughs> All right, well, there's no question who I've got to pick off the top, and that's uh, the buzzsaw from, buzz from Britain, Bruce Mowat. Uh, he played pretty well in the mixed doubles, even though they finished fourth. So I think he's going to be right there. So Britain, Brad Gushu uh, had a great year. I was thinking about Gushu yesterday. I'm thinking it'd be interesting to see what he does here. His last real curling uh, games of any consequence was the Olympic trials. I mean, they were flying there. And uh, unfortunately, he hasn't really had a chance to play since then. So it'll be interesting to see if they can maintain the form that they had in Saskatoon. Interesting to watch. Can't uh, I can't overlook Nicholas Adin. Uh, his record is just outstanding. He's the world champion from 2021. He's won the world championship five times. Olympic silver medalist in 2018. Uh, he's going to be in the final mix. He has to be. John Schuster, gold medal winner from USA in 2018. And again, I think uh, those guys will get it together in uh, Beijing, and I think they're going to be in the Final Four. So my picks are going to be USA, Sweden, Canada, and Britain. And I know we're leaving out about four other really good teams in there, but uh, that's the way I think it will shake down. Okay, Kevin, what do you got? Well, I think if you asked any anybody, 
anywhere, you're going to have uh, Great Britain and Canada chosen. I don't think there's too much problem there. I have to go with Sergei Glukov, um, absolute phenom out of uh, ROC. There's just I just have to take him. I, I understand like his, his third might not be able to keep up exactly with the rest of the field, but Sergey is such a talent that I've got to go with them. And uh, John Schuster, I agree. Um, Chris Plies is going to have to pick his game up from what I saw in the mixed doubles, but I think he probably will. And John Schuster will be tough. When John um, feels confident, he's a really good player, and he's extremely confident right now. Uh, I was talking to Tyler George yesterday, um, and just the way that he's, he's been keeping in touch with John, and just kind of the way John's acting right now, he really thinks that uh, the Schuster uh, foursome will be strong going into the four-person curling. So Very I've got good. Great Britain, Canada, ROC, USA. Okay, and I'm picking Canada, Sweden, and Italy. Okay, I'm rolling. I picked up where you left off. Why are you laughing at me? Why, why, why are you laughing at my picks? It can't be a bad picks? idea. I'm laughing. I'm laughing as an agreement because uh, how do you not? Uh, yeah. Italy just rolled through well, the mixed doubles for fun. So, oh, why not? <laughs> yeah. Well, Ratanas, those guys have done well in the last few years at the world level with everything they've been in. So you can't discount them. That's without question, particularly with Masson are playing third. Right. right. <laughs> go to uh, cool. Go to uh, go to cool bet and see what the odds are. Um, Okay, tomorrow's the first men's drop. Uh, Warren, we've got four games. Denmark, Canada, U.S. is playing ROC. Norway, Sweden. Or, sorry, Norway, uh, uh, Switzerland. Switzerland. And uh, China and Sweden. What do you okay. like, Warren, there? Uh, very quickly, I think Denmark will fall to the wishes of Brad Dushu. He'll win that game. The USA will take out ROC. Switzerland will overtake Norway, and Sweden will easily defeat China. Kev? Well, I'm a little different. Uh, I do think Canada will be fine. I would definitely pick ROC uh, over the U.S. to start. Uh, Switzerland will be very strong against Norway. Sweden uh, will overtake China. So I've got Canada, ROC, Switzerland, Sweden. Okay, very good. Uh, Kevin, that's the uh, probably the last time we're going to hear from you for a couple of days. You are going to, like a bear, and like your nickname, you're going <laughs> to crawl into a cave <laughs> and get a little yes. hibernation time. Uh, so tomorrow it's me and Warren, and Ben Hebert uh, is going to come on the show. And, of course, everyone knows how shy Ben is. It'll be very tough to get him to give his opinion <laughs> of everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> that'll boy, Benny. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Thanks a lot to Cool Bet for sponsoring Daily Draw. We do this each and every day. Uh, during the Olympics, and uh, there's still two weeks left, so uh, tune in. It get, it drops around one o'clock every day, Eastern. Cool Bet's a proud sponsor of curling and, frankly, all things related. The logo is a polar bear. After all, if you love sports, make sure you join the thousands of people already enjoying life inside the Cool Bet community. So, if you're so inclined, head to the website, like I said, and place a wager. I bet you get good odds on Italy. Go with me. Uh, yeah, trust me. Trust me. <laughs> You're still laughing at me, Kevin. <laughs> uh, send us an email, okay, inside uh, curling at gmail.com. And our Facebook group is still very lively, and so is our Facebook page. Why don't you join up there? Thanks a lot to Rod Paulson uh, for looking after all of that. So there you go, boys. Uh, there's a wrap. When I started at the beginning of the show, I said, okay, uh, I'm going to make this a no-edit show. And uh, you've just finished listening to a show where there was about 20 edits that I caused them to do. <laughs> but the problem is, Kevin, my hair is in my eyes, okay? I'm like you. I can't, I can't see everything, you know? Uh, so understand how what a struggle this <laughs> that, is. More. The hair is somewhere, but it's not in your <laughs> eyes. <laughs> uh, so so uh, drop us a line again, insidecurling at gmail.com. Who better to ask questions about the Olympics or anything than... And Warren, the guy who's the, the greatest ambassador ever of the game, and of course Kevin is the gold medalist, and a few other wins, Kev, you've had under your belt yeah, in your life. Over the years. Yeah, <laughs> that a boy. Okay. Uh, back to bed, everybody. Uh, we'll talk to you next. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Uh, ben Hebert's going to join us, uh, and Kevin's going to take a rest. We'll see you tomorrow, everyone. You've been listening to Daily Draw. <laughs>